Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India See, what we are trying to study uh, now at this stage of the course is the so called uh, good functions that you can define on a variety okay and uh, actually uh, uh, these these good functions are called as regular functions okay and uh, you know uh, we have defined uh, if so, so for any variety or a quasi affine variety in a fine space so if I call that as x, x is either a closed irreducible subset of some affine space or well or I can take an open subset uh, open subset of course non empty open subset of such uh, an irreducible closed sub variety that is an irreducible closed subset of some affine space then uh, we have defined uh, this uh, this operation o this operation o gives you o of x in this case and in this case it gives you o of u and what is o of x o of x is supposed to be the ring of uh, uh, regular functions on x okay o of u is similarly the ring of regular functions on u so here uh, what I am having on this side is uh, uh, affine or quasi affine of quasi affine varieties these are the objects on this side okay so an irreducible closed subset of affine space is called an affine variety if you recall and an open subset of non empty open subset of such an affine variety is called a quasi affine variety okay and for an affine variety or a quasi affine variety I defined uh, the ring of regular functions uh, uh, to be uh, functions which can be locally written as quotients of polynomials okay. So what it means is that see your, your uh, whether it is x or whether it is u they are all sitting inside inside an affine space and on the affine space I have natural functions given by polynomials polynomials in the right number of variables okay so if you give so in this case if it is a n I am taking polynomials in n variables and you give me a polynomial in n variables that gives you a function from affine space into uh, the base field k okay which of course uh, to just to remind you is always uh, an algebraically closed field uh, and so any polynomial here uh, gives you a map from a n to uh, k okay and that map uh, uh, can be restricted to any subset 
So, such a map can be restricted to x, such a map can be restricted to u okay and what we are saying is that we are saying that uh, uh, if I, if you take two such polynomials okay and suppose uh, uh, I take the quotient of these two polynomials and suppose I look at uh, suppose I restrict this quotient to a uh, subset where the denominator polynomial does not vanish then that will also give me a function from that subset into k okay and the its functions like this which are which I am calling is a as as regular functions. So more generally a regular function is something that locally looks like a quotient of polynomials okay. So it is so in the right way to say it is that a, a regular function is something that it is a, it is a function which is got by uh, which is locally a quotient of polynomials and it is gotten by gluing such quotients okay. And of course because of the quasi compactness of the Zariski topology you know that this gluing can be done on just on a finite number of uh, basic open sets okay that is something that we have seen last time. And in fact <coughs> what we proved was we proved that you know uh, that whenever the variety is uh, whenever x is isomorphic to an affine variety okay. So I am, I am again making a statement which is uh, which is kind of a retrospective kind of statement uh, uh, it is a futuristic statement in the sense that I have not defined what is meant by a isomorphism of varieties. So it is very strictly not correct uh, or, 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 or pedagogically sound for me to tell you uh, give a statement like uh, let x be isomorphic to an affine variety but assume it for the moment okay. So the fact is that whenever a variety or a so if x is already a close sub uh, irreducibly close subset of affine space it is already an affine variety by definition but if you take an open subset of such an affine variety the beautiful thing is that it may or may not be uh, an affine variety In what I mean by that is that it may or may not be isomorphic as a variety to another variety which is affine. So uh, so the <coughs> both 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 cases happen so there are special cases when you take u when you take u equal to uh, you put you take x equal to uh, if you take x equal to a n okay and if you take uh, 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 u to be the basic open subset defined by the uh, uh, locus uh, uh, of points where a polynomial h in the right number of variables n variables does not vanish then you know that this is actually uh, an affine variety in the sense that uh, the uh, this can be identified as a closed uh, subset of uh, uh, an affine space of dimension one more we have seen this and in in this case what happens is that be even though u is only a quasi affine variety in a n it is actually isomorphic to a variety in a n plus 1. So in so in that sense u is not only a quasi affine variety but it is also an affine variety it is not affine it is not an affine variety in a n but it is an affine variety in uh, a n plus 1 okay and uh, on the other hand you know if I will give you I um, if you take this a statement like this if you take a n I mean if you take a situation like this take x equal to a n and take u to be just the com just the uh, just the complement of the origin okay. So you take uh, a n uh, minus the origin okay. Now uh, this is also an open subset of an affine variety and the fact is that of course the fact is that if n is greater than 1 this is not this is not this can never be isomorphic to an affine variety it is a deep it is a fact that we will see later okay this cannot be isomorphic to an affine variety right. So uh, there are open subsets of affine varieties namely there are quasi affine varieties which can be isomorphic to affine varieties and there are quasi affine varieties which cannot be isomorphic to affine varieties and the point is that uh, whenever a variety or a quasi affine variety. Uh, especially whenever you take a uh, so uh, let me begin like this if you take a if you take an affine variety okay namely it is already an irreducible closed subset of some an if you calculate the ring of regular functions okay then I proved last time that this is isomorphic 
as uh, k algebras to the uh, ring of uh, uh, polynomial functions the ring of uh, uh, coordinate functions the, co the so called affine coordinate ring of x which you know uh, is defined to be just the affine coordinate ring of the full affine space in which x is sitting modulo the ideal of x which is a prime ideal. So it, this is a finitely generated k algebra and uh, this is how I define the ring of functions on an irreducible closed subset okay and the fact is that if x is an irreducible closed subset of an then the ring of regular functions is naturally isomorphic to the ring of uh, to this ring the affine coordinate ring of uh, uh, of functions that come out of polynomials okay. So, so what you are saying is you are saying the following so what does it mean what it means is if x is an irreducible closed sub variety of irreducible closed subset of some an then a function on x which is got gotten by locally gluing quotients of polynomials is actually represented globally by a single polynomial function mind you what are the elements of ax the elements of ax are uh, are just the cosets of i mean the elements of ax are just cosets here this is a quotient ring these are cosets so an element of ax is written as f bar where f is an element of the, the affine coordinate ring of a fine space namely f is just a polynomial in n variables and f bar denotes the coset f plus ix okay and the fact is that this f plus ix also defines uh, a function on x what is that function it is just f restricted to x you have if you take an f here it is a polynomial in n variables so it is a function on a fine space and x is after all a subset of a fine space so I can I can restrict that polynomial function to x and the resulting function on x is not f itself I mean it is a restriction of f but it can also be represented by a g such that the difference f minus g is in the ideal of x. So writing uh, a function here as f bar means that you are writing it up to the ideal of x because you if you have a function on x and you add to it a function that is identically 0 on x okay then the resulting thing is also going to give you the same function on x okay. So the function on x is of course a polynomial function on x is of course a polynomial function on an up to an element of the ideal of x because element the polynomial functions in the ideal of x when you restrict them to x they are going to give you the 0 function okay and what does this isomorphism signify this isomorphism signifies that you give me uh, if you take an irreducible closed subset of a fine space then a function on that with values in k if it is obtained by locally gluing quotients of polynomials then it can be represented globally by a polynomial by as the restriction of a single polynomial function that is what it says and in particular you know if you take x equal to a n itself what this will tell you is that if you take a if you take a function on all of a fine space which is locally the quotient of polynomials then globally it has to be a polynomial and that polynomial has to be unique because in that case you will get an isomorphism of o x namely O a n with a n itself because i a n will be the 0 ideal okay. So uh, that is the significance of the uh, the isom uh, that is the significance when you get an isomorphism when you apply the O and the a okay mind you you can apply O and a has been defined only for some certain special uh, objects on this side okay. So you know if you remember if you take uh, if you take uh, if you take a basic open set like this okay then you know I have defined A of uh, uh, that basic open set the functions on that basic open set to be just uh, the localization of uh, the functions uh, the ring of functions on the ambient space uh, at H. So and this is uh, so this is this is very simple uh, when you take a ring and you put a subscript uh, uh, saying uh, you are localizing at that element it means you are just inverting that element and that makes sense because basically because on dh h does not vanish so 1 by h and all powers of 1 by h are also valid functions 
on dh and therefore a general valued function on dh will be some polynomial by a power of h and that is exactly the kind of elements that you have in this localization. So we made this definition okay and in fact I justified that this definition is correct in uh, uh, at least I gave 3 partial justifications as to why this definition is correct of course you know one one justification was that it is it is correct to invert h because h is not 0 on dh which is the locus where h is not 0 therefore a general function on this should be some polynomial divided by a power of h okay which makes sense and the and when you collect all these things together and identify them properly you will get the localization at h that is one justification what is the other justification the other justification is the dh is also as I told you an affine variety because it can be identified with a closed subset of a n plus 1. So you know this dh if you recall this d of h which sits inside a n okay can be uh, can be identified with uh, uh, the 0 set of h y minus 1 in uh, uh, an affine space of dimension 1 more okay where y is the extra coordinate that you are adding okay and uh, this identification comes because of the projection the projection map from a n plus 1 to a n if you restrict it to this closed subset you will get this and what is so you know if you believe uh, I, I asked you to check that it is a matter of uh, a topology to check that this this identification is not only uh, bijective it is not just a bijective map of sets but it is also a homeomorphism such the risky topology which I hope you have checked okay but the fact is I will you can go one step further in fact this is an isomorphism of even varieties okay and that is again a statement that you will have to that we will have to fix up uh, later on when we come to the notion of isomorphism but if you believe that then the uh, then it tells you that since this is an irreducible closed subset of uh, an affine space this is an affine variety and this is something that is isomorphic to an affine variety and therefore it is correct to define a of this to be the same as a of this and the a of this is actually isomorphic to uh, because of uh, lo properties of local uh, of localization in commutative algebra a of this is precisely this okay because a of a of uh, z of h y minus 1 is just a of a n plus 1 divided by h y minus 1 which is the ideal of z of h y minus 1 because h y minus 1 is an irreducible polynomial and this 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 uh, this is actually isomorphic to a of a n uh, localized at h okay because this is k x 1 through x n comma y by h y minus 1 and that is isomorphic to k x 1 through x n polynomial ring localized at h okay this is a property from commutative algebra and I was just trying to tell you that this isomorphism between these two rings is actually a commutative algebraic translation of this isomorphism of varieties okay and therefore I told you that is the justification as to why you should de you can define uh, a of d of h to be this okay that was the second justification okay and the third there was yet another justification that I gave and that justification was the third justification was that if I take this a if I take this a uh, so uh, you know it is the it is the third justification is that whenever for example I start with a n okay I go to a of a n if I take max spec I get back a n okay so which means I, so I am just saying a max spec of a of a n is the same as a n that is just the Nullstrand sense if you if you really look. but it is not just uh, the Nullstrand sense as a set theoretic bijection it is actually I, I told you to check that this is even uh, and in fact we checked I think we actually checked that this identification of max spec of a of a n k uh, which is uh, the set of maximal ideals in a of a n uh, with the Zariski topology for the maximal spectrum which is induced by the Zariski topology and the prime spectrum that with that topology max spec of a of a n and a n itself are homeomorphic and again let me go one step further we will see it is a fact that this homeo it is not just even a homeomorphism it is an isomorphism of varieties in the most general sense okay. So the fact is that uh, uh, similarly if I take uh, an irreducible close sub x then 
I we checked that if you take max spec of uh, Ax then that is isomorphic to X itself at least you could have you would have you must have checked that it is homeomorphic to X uh, uh, topologically okay but the fact is it is even isomorphic to X okay. So, so the moral of the story is that somehow uh, uh, if something uh, is affine if you then you define the A of that okay and then if you apply max spec you should get back that thing okay. So, the fact is that if I take dh if I apply A of d uh, if I apply A to that I get A of dh which is this okay if I take if this is the correct definition if I take max spec of this I should get back dh and that is again a fact I ask you to check at least topologically that you get it back okay. So, mo these are 3 justification as to why justification as to why this is the correct definition but then here is yet another definition the uh, for dh I can define O of dh okay and then it is a fact that O of dh turns out to be isomorphic to this okay. So, uh, 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 this is uh, this is part of this philosophy that I was trying to tell you that you know whenever something is affine if you apply O to it and you apply A to it A is always defined uh, whenever something is affine okay and O is defined whether something is affine or not and the fact is that the characterization that something is affine is given by the fact that when you apply O to it and apply A to it you should get the same thing if you get the same thing then and only then is that thing affine okay that they that is then and only then is that object and can can uh, realizable as an irreducible closed subset of some affine space okay. So, the fact that an object is can be real realizable as an irreducible closed subset of affine space okay is uh, is captured in checking uh, whether O of that and A of that are isomorphic okay and and I told you that well uh, 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 the so you know if I up if I if I take uh, if I take O of U okay uh, I I should not say O of U is not O of e, so in this case if you take a fine space minus the origin. I should not say O of U is not isomorphic to A of U the fact is that I do not define A of U because I know it is not affine okay. So, A is somehow defined only uh, in cases where you know things are affine okay and uh, the fact is that uh, for all those things that are affine if you apply O also you will get the same result as you would get when you apply A okay. Now um, yeah so uh, so this is the this is the story so far, all right, and uh, so I was trying to just tell you that. Uh, uh, so here I should say, uh, uh, here U is not a fine. Okay. U is not a fine if n is greater than one. by that I mean u is not isomorphic to any affine variety provided n is greater than 1. Of course, if n is 1 uh, you know then you are going to get a 1 minus the origin and a 1 minus the origin is affine because it is just uh, uh, it is just d of x what is d of x d of x is the set of points where x does not vanish and the set of points where x does not vanish on a 1 is precisely a 1 minus 0. So, when n equal to 1 it is actually affine because it is a d of x and all I am trying to say so when n is 1 it is actually even basic open affine okay. But when n is greater than 1 this is very very far away it is not it is not even affine okay it is very far away from being affine right. So, uh, all right so you know now uh, somehow you know I am I am uh, uh, now I am le now let me go back and uh, uh, try to tell you uh, that in all these things you know I have been I have been using this this statement that uh, some variety is isomorphic to some other variety okay. So, I have to define what an isomorphism of varieties is and you know uh, in a general philosophy the general method to define an isomorphism is to define a morphism who which has an inverse which is also a morphism okay this is how you define an isomorphism alright. 
so I so basically isomorphisms can be defined if I can define morphisms and so what I am going to do next is how do I define morphisms okay so so let me make that statement here so that so let me put that as a title here morphisms of uh, 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 of varieties so uh, by varieties I mean either uh, affine varieties affine or quasi affine varieties. How do I define what a morphism is? All right. Now, uh, to to understand this, let me give you a. Uh, uh, let me go back to something more basic. Let me go back to topology. Okay. So, uh, see, let's let let me take. Uh, 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 so motivation. Motivation is, uh, you know, uh, let. Uh, x y be topological spaces okay and uh, let mod x mod y be the underlying sets okay so you you see what i am trying to do don't don't, uh, don't confuse mod x with the cardinality of x which is uh, the usual uh, notation okay so here for me mod x is not the cardinality of x and mod y is not the cardinality of x when I write mod x I mean throw away the topological space structure on x and think of x only as a set so mod x is just x as a set mod y is just y as a set okay now what I am going to do is there are there are two categories there is a category of topological spaces. and there is a category of uh, sets okay so in the category of sets the objects are sets and the maps so uh, uh, just to recall a category uh, uh, very naively it basically consists of two pieces of data one piece of data specifies the so called objects of the category and the second piece of data uh, is uh, the maps uh, between these objects maps with certain properties and that is why the word morphisms is also used instead of just maps okay. So every category is specified by defining what the objects are and what the maps are okay so when I say category of sets the objects are sets and the maps are just maps of sets okay just functions from one set to another without any other properties. When I say category of topological spaces the objects are topological spaces and what are the maps the maps are not just maps of sets but they are they have to be continuous maps okay and you can go on like this I, uh, for example if you take the category of rings uh, the objects then are rings and the maps are not just set theoretic maps of rings they are ring homomorphisms okay and so on and so forth okay but I am only interested in these two categories with respect to these two guys so you know if you take uh, if you take uh, 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 if you take the object x okay and uh, uh, if you take the topological space x then I have the corresponding uh, I have the corresponding uh, underlying set mod x okay and if you give me the topological space y I have the under underlying set mod y okay and then well if you give me uh, another topological spa space z okay then I will again get the set mod z okay and now well you see I start with uh, uh, so I do the following thing if you give me a map f from x to y of topological spaces okay then I will get this map mod f which is a map of uh, from mod x to mod y and the point about mod f is that I have forgot I have forgotten the continuity of f here f is a map is a morphism from x to y it is a morphism in this category so it has to be a continuous map whereas if I take mod f I am just looking at the map as a set theoretic map okay and then well if you give me any map uh, g uh, any continuous map g from y to z then I get the composite map which is uh, uh, first apply f then apply g and that is and you know composition of continuous maps is continuous therefore 
uh, if g is continuous then f, uh, f followed by g is also continuous okay and the corresponding diagram here will be here I will get a mod g and here of course I will get uh, mod of g circle f which is of course mod g circle mod f I am simply forgetting the continuity here alright and see the the fact is that uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a functor like this and this functor is called the forgetful functor uh, it is a functor that forgets the topological space structure okay it is called a forgetful functor we all uh, because you are forgetting everything connected to the topology you are given as topological space uh, you are attaching to your 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 you are just associating to it just the underlying set and given a continuous map of topological spaces you are just under associating to it the underlying set theoretic map okay. Now what this what you get from this diagram is the following you get so you know uh, uh, let me let me give some symbols uh, 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 okay so uh, let me do that here. So you see what I am trying to say is you have a home okay or uh, let me not write home um, uh, I think uh, uh, home alright so let me use more. So this MOR is supposed to be uh, abbreviation for morphisms so uh, when X and Y are objects of a category more, more XY is a set of morphisms from X to Y okay in that category. So you see if you have morphisms from if you take morphisms as topological spaces from X uh, 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 from x to well uh, so let me do the following thing so I will do the following thing I will I will take morphisms as topological spaces from y to uh, to z okay and if you give me a morphism uh, of topological spaces from y to z namely g I get a morphism uh, of topological spaces from x to z which is g circle f and this map which is going in the reverse direction one writes this as f star okay this is called the pullback of morphisms okay it is very simple you have two objects in a category okay you have a morphism between them and what you are doing is given a given a morphism on the target you compose it with this to get a morphism on the source. So a morphism a, a map a, a, a morphism from one object to the other object pulls a mo morphism on the target to a morphism on the source you are pulling back morphisms okay it is called the pullback induced by a morphism. So f star is the pullback induced by f okay so it is simply g going to g circle f okay so this is the this is the pullback functor this is the pullback induced by a map all right and you have similar map here so you have uh, mod f star uh, which is the same as well this is the same as mod of f star if you want uh, it is not well probably I should not say mod of f star so this mod f upper star it will go from morphism as sets uh, from y to z to morphism as sets from x to z okay and this is give me any h uh, it will send h to well g circle h uh, 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 sorry uh, h circle I will get h circle mod f this is what I will get okay this is my map if you give me a uh, so mind you h is just a morphism of sets it is just a set theoretic map from y to z you give me a set theoretic map from y to z since I have a map f I since I have a map mod f from x to y I compose it with the set theoretic map h from y to z and I get this composition which is this okay and the fact is that as you can see that this this is a subset of this uh, of course uh, maps of topological spaces are certainly maps of sets but they are not just maps of sets they are continuous maps okay and similarly this is a subset of this here also this set is the set of all possible maps functions from y to z 
but this is a subset which consists of only the continuous functions okay so uh, and you know two maps of topological spaces are equal if and only if they are equal as maps of sets because whenever you say equality of maps you only check at the set theoretic level okay so this is a subset of this this is a subset of this okay and uh, now what I am going to do is I am going to uh, go in the other direction so I am going to say suppose I have a uh, suppose I have two topological spaces uh, 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 so let me begin by saying the following thing if f is a continuous map from x to y okay then the pullback of f induces a map uh, from uh, it induces a map which takes continuous functions to continuous functions okay so g is a continuous function from y to z the pullback of g this if you want I will call this as f upper star g this is also if this is also continuous function from x to z okay so what is the what is so if I so let me sum it up like this you start with a continuous function from x to y then the pullback induced by that takes continuous functions to continuous functions that is what it says okay now this is the model for defining what a morphism is okay so uh, uh, the so the rule is this is a very general philosophy you want to define a certain map as a morphism the rule is you specify that the pullback induced by that map must take good functions to good functions okay so whenever you are in a situation where you know what good functions mean so for example in our in the case of topological spaces good functions are continuous functions if you are if you are working with uh, for example in our case of uh, algebraic geometry good functions are regular functions okay so you can define a morphism to be a map with the property that its pullback has the property of taking good functions to good functions the pullback of good so a map is a morphism if its pullback takes good functions to good functions so this is the general philosophy and this works uh, it not only works in algebraic geometry it works everywhere it works in uh, analysis it works in manifold theory it works universally okay so uh, so so let me so keeping that in mind let us do the following thing let us let us let us make a let us test this uh, so uh, so here is a uh, so here is a remark so le le so let me make that remark here let me make that remark here uh, clearly if f from x to y is continuous so I am abbreviating continuous to CTS then f of a star of a continuous uh, of a continuous map is equal to a continuous map okay that is what this says f of a star of a continuous map is again a continuous map and this is just uh, if you want in this case it is just a resultant a result of the fact that you know uh, a composition of continuous maps is again continuous there is nothing more than that okay but the beautiful thing is uh, the beautiful thing is that the converse to the statement holds and that is the power of the statement so here is a here is a lemma lemma uh, let uh, uh, g uh, let me give me give me okay let me write something else let me use use uh, phi from x to y from mod x to mod y be a map be a map of sets okay let phi from mod x to mod y be a map of sets suppose for every topological space z the map uh, uh, morphism as sets from y to z uh, so I should uh, here maybe uh, to be very strict uh, when I say morphism as sets I should probably put this these parallel bars to tell you that I am just looking at morphisms of sets okay but you should have understood that uh, even if I did not put it I am anyway taking morphism in the category of sets so I am only worried about the, the underlying sets okay. Uh, the map from mo the, the pullback map see so this is the pullback map 
from the morphism uh, of sets from y to z to uh, the morphism of sets from x to z which is given by h going to you first apply uh, so it is this h circle phi okay so the diagram is like this so here is so here is more the underlying uh, set of x uh, the underlying set of the topological space x this is the underlying set of the topological space y and then I have z and this is the underlying set of the topological space z and I have this map uh, 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 if you give me a h from y to z I have a phi from x to mod, uh, mod y to mod z if you have a h set theoretic map if you give me a set theoretic map phi from mod x to mod y I have this composition which is just first apply phi then apply h at this composition okay this is just phi upper star of h it is a it is a pullback map okay see this pullback map okay does the following has the following property I have here a subset uh, uh, I have here the subset which is morphism as topological spaces from y to z okay mind you uh, the way I am considering this a subset here is by associating a morphism uh, uh, as topological spaces from y to z as a set theoretic map from y to z by forgetting the topological structure I am forgetting the continuity okay that is how I am identifying this with the subset of that okay that is what these inclusions mean when I say this is a subset of this and this is a subset of this I am actually my identifying a map with its mod here right. So this morphism takes uh, uh, the map takes this into morphism of topological spaces uh, uh, x to z. You see, it's a uh, it's a it's a property. Okay, then there exists a unique continuous map phi tilde from x to y with the associated map phi tilde at the set theoretic level to be equal to phi. So this gives you a criterion as to when a map is continuous suppose you give me two topological spaces x and y and you give me a set theoretic map from x to y that means you take give me a set theoretic map from the underlying topological space of x to the underlying topological space of y how do how do you check that this set theoretic map is actually a continuous map the power of the statement is whenever it pulls back continuous functions to continuous functions then it is automatically continuous map okay. So this tells you that this philosophy of defining a morphism to be the to be a map which pulls back good functions to good functions is the right definition it works even to define the continuity of uh, a map between two topological spaces okay. So this is the uh, this is a it is a very simple observation but it is a but it is a it is it is the it is a beautiful philosophy to work with and it is exactly this kind of philosophy that we are going to use to define uh, regular uh, 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 morphism of varieties okay we are going to define morphism varieties exactly in this way and well so what is the proof see the proof is the proof is very very simple the proof is well uh, uh, you see uh, put uh, put z equal to y okay put z equal to y and you put uh, 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 h uh, is equal to uh, the set theoretic map connected uh, uh, associated to the identity map on y okay. So you see the diagram is that the so diagram is as follows I have x I have uh, y okay this is this underlying set of x this is underlying set of y okay and here is my uh, here is my uh, phi set theoretic map and then well uh, the z I am going to put is just equal to y so this z is just y okay so the underlying set of y is the same as the underlying set of z and then the map h that I am going to take from the underlying set of y to the underlying set of z is the identity map on y okay and the claim is that when I when I do this what I will get here is phi upper star of 
uh, identity uh, map on y okay and what is the claim the claim is that notice that identity of y is the identity map on y is of course a continuous map as a topological as a map of topological spaces from y to y the identity map on a topological space is always a continuous map because after all the inverse image of an a set that is open is a set itself and that set is anyway open so inverse image of open sets are open therefore the identity map on a topological space is always continuous okay therefore this idy the identity map on y is a continuous map of topological spaces and uh, so you know and what is the uh, 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 what is a so what is the conclusion that the pullback by phi takes continuous maps to continuous maps so it tells you that phi star of identity y is will give you a map from uh, uh, the underlying space of x to underlying space of y and that map is actually a continuous map but what is this map this map is ex this see this map uh, is uh, is a map which set theoretically is the same as phi so you know if I if I set this as if I call this as phi tilde okay if I uh, so all I am trying to say is that phi tilde is actually this map okay so then so so the proof is very 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 clear since identity map on y belongs to uh, uh, it is a it is a topological map continuous map from y to y it is uh, 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 it is image under uh, phi upper star namely phi upper star of uh, i d y actually uh lands in uh the set of continuous maps from x to y with with underlying map with underlying map underlying map phi itself and that is the proof. So the moral of the story is that uh, uh, a, ma a set theoretic map between two topological phases is continuous if and only if it pulls back continuous functions to continuous functions okay. A set theoretic map phi of topological spaces is a continuous map if and only if it pulls back continuous functions to continuous functions okay so more generally you this is the method to define mo a morphism a morphism is a map uh, such that under pullback it takes good functions to good functions and now you know what I am going to do how am I going to define a morphism between two varieties uh, the two varieties can be affine or quasi affine it does not matter. So what I am going to do I am going to do the following thing I am just going to say a map is a, morph a morphism between two varieties is a set theoretic map which pulls back good functions to good functions and what are good functions for varieties they are regular functions. So I am going to just say a morphism between varieties is a map of varieties a set theoretic map of varieties that pulls back regular functions to regular functions alright and the beautiful thing is that uh, 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 there is there is a there is a small glitch in this proof uh, in this in this definition the glitch is that I have to specify uh, for avoiding certain pathologies that the map that I start with is not just a map of sets I should already uh, specify that that map is already continuous okay. So you see here what we did was <coughs> the base structure the base category was the category of sets and the topological and the and the, the category with more structure was the topological category. So here you had these were just sets and these were sets with topo with, with the topological structure okay but if you go to varieties it is even more one it is one, one step even more because as far as varieties are concerned it they not only have a topology namely the Zarsky topology but but it is not just the topology uh, 
uh, uh, that's, that describes all the geometry of varieties. The geometry of varieties is far more higher than just uh, the topology of varieties. Okay, this to study the geometry of varieties, the first step is study to study the topology topology of varieties. So when you look at a variety, you should look at it at three levels. The variety as a set is the base level. You are looking at it at the cat category of sets. Then the next level is you look at the var variety as a topological space, in which case you are looking at it the at the Zariski topology. Okay. Then there is a third uh, level, which is the variety as a variety itself. Okay. The variety as a variety itself is something more. It's not just a topological space. Okay. And therefore, if you so the point is that in in that situation, the philosophy uh, this philosophy will work. You will have to replace this forget, forget full functor from topological spaces to sets to the next higher level, which is from varieties to topological spaces. So what you must assume at the base is not just a map of sets. You should already assume something that is a map at the level of topological spaces. So what is the correct definition of a morphism of varieties? It is a morphism of the underlying topological spaces, namely it is a continuous map which under pullback takes regular functions to regular functions that is the definition okay. So that with that definition uh, you can define what a morphism of varieties is and all these in all the previous lectures whenever I said uh, isomorphism varieties I meant a morphism like this okay namely a continuous map that pulls back regular functions to regular functions uh, with an inverse which also is a morphism namely which also pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So that is the very easy definition of what a, an isomorphism varieties has to be it has to be a bijective map and both the forward map and the reverse map should pull back at, uh, regular functions to regular functions okay that is what uh, uh, it means to say that the uh, map is an isomorphism of varieties okay and uh, and I should tell you with a word of caution that there are many categories in which uh, uh, usual categories in which a bijective morphism is also an isomorphism that is if you have a morphism which is bijective then the inverse uh, map is also a morphism okay but it is not true with varieties unfortunately okay. So for example if you have an if you have a bijective uh, uh, linear map then the inverse is automatically a linear map so it is an isomorphism if you have a bijective homomorphism of rings the inverse map is automatically a homomorphism of rings so it is an isomorphism of rings okay but not all bijective morphisms are isomorphisms for example as I told you uh, I think one of these um, uh, I do not know whether I told you but if you take uh, the map from the real line if you look at maps from real the real line to the real line which are uh, with the property that they are not just uh, continuous but with the property that they are differentiable then you know if you take a, a bijective differentiable map need not be a differentiable isomorphism its inverse need not be differentiable for example if you take x going to x cube then that map is a bijective uh, differentiable map but the inverse map which is x to the 1 by 3 is not derivable at the origin okay so bijective morphism never it is not necessary that uh, it is an isomorphism namely the inverse map need not be a morphism okay and it is also true with varieties that a bijective uh, morphism need not be an isomorphism okay so that is a word of caution right okay so I will stop here and continue next lecture.